हे गाइस हाय सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अजियोर एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी ऑथेंटिकेशन यूजिंग बी टू सी टेनेंट व्हिच आई क्रिएटेड इन माय लास्ट वीडियो सो दिस टाइम आई एम गोइंग टू ऑथेंटिकेट माय वेब एप्लीकेशन जनरेट अ टोकन एंड सेंड दैट टोकन टू अ वेब एपीआई and authenticate that entire request so i would again request you all that uh, please like and share and subscribe my channel uh, if you like my work so that i can continue the same uh, with the same pace and bring some more interesting and good content for you all so yeah uh first of all i uh, the way uh, first of all uh, i would like to say that i'll share the code uh, the, the link code in the description box box my github repository link in the description box plus i will share uh, my uh, the link of previous video also that i have created for azure adp to c tenant so that uh, the things are quite clear to you so uh, i'll use the same approach which i used previously i'll uh, have a code which is not authenticated as of now as um, i can show it to you let's start it and let's see how it behaves when authentication is not there and then i will see my application is simply returning data to the grid and it is uh, working as expected so now let's get started and let's do some registrations on azure portal so right now, as you can see i have my b2c tenant selected so let's go to home uh, let's click on azure active directory and let's do some app registrations so this is the new registration web api backend this will be the name this is the flow because i am going to use the user flow here select the platform it, it, it is not recommended here because uh, it is anyways a backend application so not required uh, so again we are going to make a note of this client id here web api this is important now we are going to expose our api here we will be setting a scope this will be the scope uh, now add the scope here this will be the application id url and now we'll add a scope this so the scope will be task read this can be any name actually so task read this is the scope that i am adding here add scope let's make a note of this scope also this is important for us uh we are done uh, with the api part now let's register our front end application web app front end this is this here it is important because we are going to uh get the url return to this particular part so let's make a note of the check the this will be the url 44376 so let me no actually this will be the url i remember that this will be the url because i'm using this profile to debug uh, my asp.net core let's register it so as we can see our application is registered let's make a note of client id here it is again a very important record so web app here we need to select some more options here we need to select access token and id tokens here this is for accepting the token implicitly 
or explicitly so let's save this information also next we need to generate a secret here because uh, last time when we did an angular authentication we did not uh, generate a secret because uh, that was not required but here since it is a server to server authentication so secret will be required in this case so let's generate that guys this secret will remain uh, will be visible only one time so i would say to make a note of this and maintain it somewhere because once we are out of this window and uh, the secret will not be visible to us that's how it is so let's make a note of the secret also next is api permissions here we are going to add the uh, permission of the api that we have created so i'll click on add a permission here and uh, i'll search my api in my api this is the api that i have created and uh, this is the scope that i created there so i need a permission so i'll add a permission here and i will provide the consent admin consent to the permission that i have added and i think that's it with the azure part let's get back to our code and see how it behaves so first of all um, i would like to lock my web api the way i did in my previous uh, video so i would lock, like to lock my api with um, authentication thing so let's go to startup.cs first of all uh, in startup.cs um, let's install a nuget package i already have that nuget package but i would like to show you guys which package we need to install we have to install this microsoft identity dot web package here so once this package is just installed let's go to startup file we need this uh, we need to add this part add authentication where we are going to add a scheme and uh, we are going to define the identity web api adb to c uh, option with that we are going to add and adb to c option is something uh, some segment that we have defined in app settings so we will be looking at that in at that in a moment first of all let's add the missing namespaces for jwt bearer we will be using this namespace for identity addition we'll be using the another namespace that i have just uncommented so this is the thing that we will be doing next is our use authentication we are going to add that middleware also in our code next is uh, weather forecast controller let's authenticate this controller here so this this attribute is required root is fine scope scope is okay we are fetching scope here with constants so this constants i have to check what scope we had last time so scope name is task read so we have to change the name there this is the name and guys and um, this is completely optional thing so uh, since we are using b2c authentication so i wanted to demonstrate that part so what i have done is i am going to uh, display the user name uh, of a particular user in every uh, grid record summary record so let's do that so for that we need an http accessor so here we have it this is the http context accessor this will allow us the access of content and i'm going to change this summary code here and the summary code is simply and uh, we're fetching the username from context accessor first name of the user i just want to demonstrate that we can do this part also so we are locked we have locked this particular part um, let's set it as a startup project and see if it is locked properly so as we can see we will get up okay okay i think it is um, asking for the parameters that we have defined in app settings.json basically um, uh, 
uh, in startup.cs it is it, it is searching for this particular part this particular portion which i have commented and that's why it is giving me exception so let's do one thing let's uncomment it for a moment and see how it behaves uh, let's uncomment it and see if we get 401 or not basically we will get it we are getting 401 bingo so now this portion is really important because um, uh, this is the place uh, as I told in my previous video also this is the place where we people make most of the mistakes so guys I would request you all to please pay attention on this particular part so this is Azure AD B2C section which I have defined and here we have to add the instance instance will be um, the type of login window that we want to show so here we want the login window of B2C type so we are going to add the details accordingly so if I click on here um, this is my this is my tenant name that I have created so I'm going to add my tenant name here so this type of login I want then we want the domain name domain name is again the complete tenant domain that we have created so this is the tenant domain that we have all right that's fine here we need the client ID also so the client ID will be the client ID of the API that we have created this is the API uh, so this is the client ID that we have created the callback path will involve this user flow that we have created so B2C new flow so guys we are done with the details of the uh, uh, app registrations that we have done for api let's switch to web application and see what changes we have to make there so let's start with startup.cs in startup.cs again we are going to install the same uh, new get package um microsoft web.identity let's see that quickly yeah this is the one and this is the one actually we have two new two new get packages installed here because uh, here we have to talk about ui also so yeah let's go to startup.cs we need to add the basic code here we, we need to add the dependencies for both um, web app authentication here again we are going to use a b2c section plus uh, we have to use the scope also these things we have defined in the configuration plus we are going to use this at Microsoft identity part also apart from this we have to define open ID connection connects as well so yeah here it is next then we are going to simply do use authentication part next is let's go to this service so here in this service what we are going to do we we are going to uh, use the token and the username that we have generated so let's see how we are going to use it in a moment this is the token acquisition these are the simple di assignment that we are doing code i'll share in my github repository guides guys please don't worry about that uh, let's focus on the details that i am uh, mentioning here in the video this video will be a bit long because it has a lot of details in it i I'm try not trying to rush that much because uh, these details are quite minute and we can miss some crucial information if we don't pay attention to these things so that's why let's bear with the long video so here we have fetched the access token for the scope that is defined in the configuration I'll go to configuration in a moment this is the access token bearer and the same details that we use to fetch the data so now uh, prepare authenticated client will have my token added and everything is there in place so let's go to um, our controller that is home controller um, here we have to simply add these scopes uh, which is defined in the web config so that's the only change we have here and now we are going to um, go to our app settings here we have a lot we have a lot here so uh, let's pay attention because um, guys these details are as I'm mentioning again and again these details are really important and we have to make sure that we enter the correct details here 
so uh, instance will be same as the one we have added in our app settings of web api so this is the instance control c here yes domain will be same so let's add the domain sign out callback path sign in callback policy id will be same so let's take these values also c now we are going to make a note of client id and client secret for the web app that we have created this is the client id and the client secret that we have created c so guys i think we are done with the details let's click and see how the application behaves in the meantime let me make a note of the user that i have created in the directory uh, user id email id which i am going to use for login purpose so yes these details mm. okay So here we are going to enter the user details that I have copied. Let me copy it again. it's not working <laughs> uh, I don't know like why it, it doesn't work every time so well not no, it doesn't work every time actually for the very first first time so let's try to see what mistake we did let's troubleshoot yeah I can I can find it uh, we have not entered this scope correctly so let's try to copy the scope from here the updated scope and place it here and now let's try to run it again I think it should work now cross my fingers and let's see see if it works this time or not let's log in And it's working this time so guys you can see these details are coming from api and we are getting the username also that we copied uh, that we got uh, that we are getting directly from api so thank you thank you so much for watching the video and uh, i hope you like my content next time i'll try to uh, bring some another good content for you all here in the meantime happy coding enjoy your time thanks bye, -bye.